Hi everyone, back in chapter 10, Facial Devices and Technology. And in this section, 10-9, we're gonna talk about how to safely and effectively use the galvanic current. So galvanic current is used to create two significant reactions in aesthetics. And the first one here is chemical desincrustation. And the second one is ionic or iontophoresis. So let's take a look at those terms again. And here is desincrustation, and it is a form of anaphoresis, and it's a process used to soften and emulsify the grease deposits, the oils, or the blackhead in the follicle. Um, we do use it to treat acne, melia, and comedones. And then iontophoresis, that is the process of infusing water-soluble products into the skin um, by the use of the electric current, such as positive or negative, um, those poles of the galvanic machine. Okay, so um, the galvanic machine, what it does is it converts alternating current, which is found in your outlets, Okay, into direct current DC. And so those electrons, they are allowed to flow continuously in the same direction. And what that does is it creates a relaxation response that can be regulated to target specific nerve endings in the epidermis. Now, this machine can leave a metal taste in the mouth, which is very normal. And so what that does when they get the metal taste, it's not from the metal feelings in your teeth. It's changing the polarity of the saliva in your mouth, and it gives you that metal taste. Now, when to use your galvanic current? Uh, galvanic current is used when your goal is to prepare the skin for extractions or to assist in delivering products into the skin. So we can use it in a facial right after we do ex exfoliation. Um, we'll use it and then right prior to extractions because that'll uh, liquefy the sebum. So when you're doing your extractions, they come out much easier. And then also we can use it prior to masking to deliver ingredients in the skin or during the final stages of a facial. So um, the effects of using the galvanic machine. Now there's two main benefits when you're using this machine. Again, the first one is desincrustation right here. And that causes an alkali reaction to soften the follicles for deep cleansing. And then the second one, iontophoresis, what that is, is we're going to introduce water-soluble products into the skin. Now, there is a caution you want to remember. Uh, don't use negative galvanic current on skin with broken capillaries or pustular acne conditions or even clients with high blood pressure or metal implants or pacemakers and so forth. So let's talk first about desincrustation. And desincrustation uses the galvanic current to create a chemical reaction in the skin that emulsifies sebum and debris in the follicles. Now, when you're going to perform desincrustation, you're going to apply a negative, um, negative pH solution. It's an electronegative solution on the skin. And this solution it's formulated to remain on the skin rather than being absorbed into the skin. So when you're conducting desincrustation, the client, they're going to hold this electrode here. And when they're doing desincrustation, this is going to be positive, their electrode. And then the one that you hold, the esthetician, it's going to be negative, set on negative polarity. And you can do this one, or there's another one, this one here, that is a round wheel looking one. So you can use either one of those when you're performing desincrustation. 
And so what it does, I just think of it this way. Uh, I think acne is a negative thing. So I'm going to have my machine turned on negative. That's just how I remember it. And then the client automatically, their electrode here will become positive. So that's the one that they hold. Okay, now this creates a chemical reaction. And what it does is it transforms sebum in your skin into soap, a process known as saponification. So if anybody's ever made soap, we know that soap is made from fat and lye, sodium hydroxide. Now with this machine, when the electric current interacts with the salts in our skin, which is sodium chloride, it creates this chemical reaction known as sodium hydroxide or lye. And what it does is this soapy substance helps to dissolve the excess oil, clogged follicles, comedones, and other debris on their skin while softening it at the same time. Now again, there's the various electrodes. So you saw these, these electrodes. And then the most common though is this flat wheel one and then this one, the uh, rolling one. Okay, so those are gonna be the most common electrodes, the roller and then the round wheel. So to make proper contact with each of these electrodes, so what you have to do as you cover them with, say this is attached to here, for instance, you would cover this with a 4x4, four four, bring the 4x4 four four up onto this handpiece and secure it with a rubber band. Then you dip this in a desincrustation solution and you apply it to the skin. And of course you would only use it on areas in the T-zone where it's more oily. You would never use this on areas that are dry. Um, even my skin, you would never use this on my skin either. Um, you can make your own uh, desincrustation by taking baking soda and mix it in with water and you use that for your desincrustation for anaphoresis. Now, most of your water Base serums will come in an ampule, and that is used for iontophoresis. So that is products that are called cataphoresis when we're doing that, infusing water-soluble products. Now the effects of desincrustation. So desincrustation, like I told you before, is really good for oily or acne skin. Why? Because it helps soften and relaxes the follicle and all the debris in there. So when you go to do your extractions, they come out really easy. So the best practices and safety considerations for desincrustation, you wanna remember, keep an even contact with the skin once the galvanic machine is turned on. Because remember, electricity is flowing through these electrodes, okay? And if you slightly raise that off the skin on your client, they'll get a mild tingling or a shock sensation. So to avoid this, what you wanna do, keep the electrode on the skin, say you have it placed on the skin, turn the machine off. Once it's off, then lift the electrode from the skin, okay? And you wanna always advise your clients of the possibility of these sensations prior to starting your treatment. Okay, so now let's talk about iontophoresis. So iontophoresis, all it is, is the process of using electric current to introduce water-soluble solutions into the skin, such as this ampule. Okay, now this process allows us, the esthetician, to transfer or penetrate ions of an applied solution into deeper layers of the skin. So what is an ion? Well, an ion is an atom or molecule that carries an electric charge. So here I drew two atoms, which are ions here. The reason they're ions is because they carry a charge. So 
um, the current flows through the conductive solution from both the positive and the negative polarity. Now this process is known as ionization. What it does is it's a separating of a substance into ions. So here, let's take a look at this um, ion. And we have three protons in the nucleus of this atom. And we only have two electrons. So what do we have more of? We have more positive protons, right? So it's cataphoresis, and remember the T for positive. Now let's take a look at this ion. We have four protons in the nucleus, and we have five electrons. So what do we have more of? We have more electrons. So it gives it a negative charge, which would be anion, and this would be cation. So this one on the anion anaphoresis, which is a negative, okay? So that is what that is. So ionophoresis, it's always based on the universal law of attraction. For example, negative is always attracted to positive and positive is always attracted to negative. It's very similar to magnetic uh, response. So iontophoresis, it creates an exchange of negative and positive ions or charges. Okay, now the process of ionic penetration takes on those two forms. Cataphoresis, this is the infusion of a positive product, so you may have an ampule with a positive sign on there. Okay, so you're infusing a positive product into the skin. And then anaphoresis, that is the infusion of a negative product, such as desincrustation fluids. So let's take a look at the effects of iontophoresis. Okay. All right. So let's look at the positive pole anode, which is cataphoresis. So the positive solution produces an acidic reaction closes the pores, soothes the nerves, decreases blood supply, contracts blood vessels, or con uh, contracts, yeah, blood vessels, sorry about that, and it hardens and firms or tightens the tissues. Okay, let's look at the negative. The negative pole is cathode. I remember this by thinking, oh, negative cathode, like I think of a catheter, and that's a negative experience, a catheter. So I just think of it that way. And then negative we know is anaphoresis. So it produces an alkali reaction. It opens the pores, stimulates and irritates the nerves, increases blood supply, expands the blood vessels. And again, it's going to soften the tissues. So those are the reactions with um, galvanic. Okay, so the best practices and safety considerations for iontophoresis is you want to keep uh, contact with the skin. Once that machine is on, um, because remember, electricity is flowing through these electrodes. So electricity is flowing through those. And if you have even the slightest amount of removal of the skin, it's going to cause a tingling or a shock sensation on your client. So to avoid this, first thing you want to do, when the electrode is on the skin, you want to um, first turn off the machine and then remove the electrode from the skin. Um, when you are using these electrodes too, one thing you want to remember, you've got to constantly be keeping those moving at all times. Now some machines, depending on the machine, they're going to have a little switch on the panel that controls the positive and negative mode so that you don't have to manually, like this one. So you plug this into here, these, the black and red cords, they go into here. And then there's a switch right here that you, you flip positive to negative. But some of them, they, some machines don't have that. So what you have to do is you have to take these cords 
and manually insert them into the different negative and positive. So again, it just depends on what machine you're using. So let's talk about the polarity of the solutions. So you guys need to always check the labeling of the product to identify the polarity of the ampule or the solution. So right here, I just drew one. Um, it would have a rubber seal on there and it would have a positive or a negative. And I just put a positive on this one. Um, so it could be a collagen or whatever in there. So slightly acidic uh, pH products, those are considered positive and they're mostly used for iontophoresis. Now, if the, pos if the product is positive, the client and the esthetician would be in opposite um, poles on the electrodes. So what I mean by that is, so let's say it is, um, we're using an alkali or negative pH, okay? So this one would be, your machine would be, you'd use this one on the client and your machine would be set on negative. The client is holding this one wrapped with you know, a wet four by four, and they're gonna be positive. So you always remember, whatever you are, the client is the opposite. Now let's talk about if the client, we're gonna be saying, if you're gonna infuse a product that's positive, this one's the one we like to infuse with, this one's better for, you can use this like around the eyes or whatever to infuse, but um, it's kind of for smaller areas and it's better for, I like to use this one better for anaphoresis. But let's say I'm gonna infuse a positive collagen ampule. So I'm gonna set my machine to positive and my client is gonna hold the negative electrode. Okay, so they're going to be negative, I'm going to be positive. Okay, now what if this ampule had, we don't know if it's positive or negative in there. Because some manufacturers, they don't mark it. So, and it could include ingredients in the same vial that are positive and negative. Well, in that case, what happens is the product should be ionized for three to five minutes on negative first, followed by three to five minutes on positive. So I always say you're gonna end on a positive note. So what does that mean? It means, so if I'm infusing, let's say I'm infusing a product and I don't know the polarity. So I'm gonna use this and be using this on their skin. Let me show you a picture of what that looks like on this picture here. So here you would be infusing this product on the skin and the client of course is holding. So you would be positive, well you'd start out negative first and they're holding the positive. Then you switch the machine and then this is um, gonna be positive and this is gonna be negative. So it's always the opposite. So um, when you're using your machine, just remember, if I'm buying the ampule and my ampule is positive, has a plus on there, then my machine is gonna be set at positive. The client will automatically, the piece they're holding, let me grab that. So the piece that the client is holding here is gonna be negative. Okay, so if, if I'm using positive, they're gonna be negative. Now, if I'm using an alkali negative product to infuse, like for desincrustation, this will be negative, this will be positive, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's not confusing. Just remember, they're always the opposite, okay? So anyway, but again, if I don't know what is in this ampule, if I don't know if it's positive or negative, always infuse three to five minutes on negative, then turn my machine to positive and infuse another three to five minutes 
on the positive. So I always say I end on a positive note. That's just how I remember it. Okay. And this way, what you're doing is you're stimulating and softening the skin first, and then you're preparing it for the treatment when you're doing that for anaphoresis. And then you end with product penetration, which is skin tightening and soothing with cataphoresis. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's really confusing, but um, hopefully that helps you. I don't know. Um, so the molecular weight of your product is also a big factor in its permeability. Smaller molecules, they have greater penetration ability, while really large molecules, they cannot penetrate the skin. So water-based products, they're going to penetrate the skin much easier than oil-based products. Okay, so let's talk about the contraindications of this machine. So to avoid potential health complications, do not use galvanic current on clients with metal implants or a pacemaker. Never do that. What if the client has braces? That's metal, right? So no braces. Heart conditions, that includes the uh, mitral valve prolapse, so which is the bicuspid valve in the heart. So if they have, it's called MVP, mitral valve prolapse. So if they have any heart conditions, do not use this machine. If they have epilepsy, uh, don't use it because you could actually cause them to go into an epileptic seizure. If they're pregnant, obviously no metal or no electricity, sorry, applied to somebody that's pregnant. If they have high blood pressure, fever, or any infection. Diminished nerve sensi uh, sensibility, that would be like diabetes, you know, how they... Um, a person that's diabetic, they don't really have good feeling in their feet or their hands or so forth. So, and then open and broken skin wounds or new scars or inflamed pustular acne, cuparo skin or rosacea. Don't use this machine. If somebody has chronic migraines or headaches, such as like lots of headaches, do not use this machine. And if they have apprehension about the use of electrical appliances, if somebody is kind of scared of electricity, then the last thing you want to do is use a machine that could potentially give them a little tingle or a shock. That wouldn't be a very good idea either. So let's talk about the safety and maintenance of our machine. Now, before you guys attempt to clean those electrodes, these little electrodes here, um, you always want to read and follow the manufacturer's directions for cleaning and disinfecting the equipment. First off, what you want to do is detach the electrode cord from, or the electrode from the cord. So you want to take these, these unscrew. On this one, it'll unscrew down in here, this one up in here, and then this one, it's kind of down in here. So you want to uh, detach that electrode cord from the electrode. And then you want to remove, if you're using cotton, like I was telling you, um, you put cotton like over this one. You can even put cotton over this one. So remove the cotton from your electrode and discard it. Then take those electrodes, wash them in warm, soapy water to remove any organic material that could be on their um, bacteria, whatever, and then rinse and dry them. And then soak those electrodes in disinfectant for the manufacturer's uh, directed amount of time, like your leukocyte, your barbicide, marbicide, whatever you're using. And then rinse them and dry them and store them in a airtight uh, container when you're when they're completely dry you don't want to store them if they're wet obviously and then never ever place the metal electrode in an autoclave okay because that's that's going to ruin them unless 
it's a type of machine that it does say that you can place them in there, but normally don't do that. Carefully uh, spray and wipe the electrode handles, these right here. Spray uh, on a rag some leukocyte or whatever and wipe these down and the cord. Remember, pull it down through the cord. Um, and then go ahead and wipe the whole machine down. Okay, so that is the end of this section. There is a, a little section that I need you guys to go on and read. It's perform desincrustation and iontophoresis using the galvanic current. Okay, so make sure that you guys go through and read that section. Also, there's your check-in questions. And the first one that I need you to send these the answers to these questions to Krista at OliverFinley.com. The first one is list and define the two main reactions in galvanic current. And then the second one, what are the contraindications for using the galvanic machine? And then what are the effects on the skin from anaphoresis? Okay. And then the other question, how does the negative pull of the galvanic machine affect the skin? And the last one, define cataphoresis. So I need you guys to go ahead and answer those check-in questions. Again, read the procedure on your own. And then after you complete that, then what you're going to do is go back through, reread the whole section on how to safely and effectively use the galvanic current. And then watch, there's a little uh, watch section on galvanic, galvanic treatment. I'm getting tired of talking. And then there's a do section, galvanic current, multiple choice. So you need to do that as well. Okay, so don't forget, answer those questions, turn those in to me and then read the procedure 10-2 on uh, performing desincrustation and iontophoresis using the galvanic machine. Okay guys, that's all I have for this section. See you later.